you. Let's go live to our Sky News colleague and our political contributor, Chris Yulman. Chris, you're at an energy conference in Melbourne this week. That's timely. Tell me your read on this resumption of the climate wars. Yeah, it's an interesting proposition, isn't it? We're having climate ambition put up against cost of living. And I think that Peter Dutton's taking a higher risk approach because you'd have to think that in those teal seats in particular, it will be very difficult to win them back with this kind of argument. So again, you might see those splits opening up inside the coalition. But he clearly believes that this is a powerful message which will resonate with lots of households who are suffering under the cost of living. And I think the government will also be pretty happy with this as well because at the moment we're not focusing on their plan and the extraordinary difficulties with delivering their plan, but more on the over the horizon about whether or not we'll have nuclear energy in Australia. And that's not really the issue for us in the short term, Kieran. The real issue is what we do in the next two to three years and the next six in particular. Don't forget, the government's target for renewable energy on the East Coast grid, which covers South Australia as well, is 82% renewables in the next six years. We have 40% at the moment. The level of capital investment that will be required will be approaching $200 billion, we've heard here this morning. Now, somebody has to pay for a return on investment, and I'll give you a guess as to who that might be. Yeah, this is... I, I mentioned this earlier when I spoke to Eamon Fitzpatrick and David Gazard, our, our panel, that this is... It's a return to fights of years gone by. But what it is a shift in, Chris, and, and it's a re to me it, it is no longer the small target strategy that we've seen from recent oppositions. This is one very, very big target and Peter Dutton's taking it on on a range of fronts. Yeah, they're both big targets and what will matter now is the execution. Which side is best able to convince the public that what they're saying is true because there is truth on both sides of the argument. But there's one tremendous central truth, Kieran, that is there is no future in Australia with, with anyone's energy plan which isn't stonkingly expensive and that will fall onto the community to pay. And that means businesses and, and, and people who are in households. It will be very, very expensive. There'll be a divide that opens up and that will be between the energy rich and the energy poor. The energy rich will be people who already have money to put solar panels and perhaps even batteries on their roof. Those people that do that will be rewarded by energy companies. They'll start to actually be, be, become traders in the energy system. It's something we've never seen before. So that's part of the future. Those people that aren't able to afford it, they'll still be on the grid. And on the grid, power will be expensive. Yes, so th this goes to that political divide as well. And I, you, you touched on it earlier, but let, let's just dig into that a little bit because I've got Paul Fletcher coming up and I think he's, uh, he's someone with a fair bit at stake here, the member for Bradfield on Sydney's North Shore. He survived that teal wave last time, but is he at risk next election? I think absolutely. I think this is the gamble that Peter Dutton's making. Now, do people care more about their energy bills than they care about the environment? And that's, that's what's being sold. Whether or not that's a true argument or not, leave that to one side. But that's the sales pitch. People haven't been thinking much about the way that the energy system works and the ignorance of the energy system and, and through this transition plays very much in favour of those people who would just pick a target. The most absurd thing that we've seen through all this is the targeting of gas. There is nobody in that room today. That, that involves all of the best brains in the electricity sector in Australia and the gas sector that thinks there is mm. any future that doesn't include gas because what happens with, with wind and solar power is they're intermittent. They spike mm. up, they ramp down. There's only one thing that can spike up and ramp down quickly, that's gas. People talk about batteries. We haven't got anything like the amount of battery storage that we need to do that. So if you look at the Australian Energy Market Operators mm. Plan, all the way through until 2050 and obviously beyond, gas is in the system yeah around about the same amount of gas that we're using today or perhaps even a little bit more. So this is a very complex argument. People will take advantage of that. But, yes, I would think that for those who are inner-city Liberals, and there aren't too many of them left, Kieran, that they'd probably be getting a little nervous. Yeah, indeed. This is quite a, an interesting battle line that Peter Dutton has drawn, but he seems that uh, convinced that that cost of living issue is going to be one that will overwhelm all else. Chris, uh, all else. Chris Yulman, thank you as always. I very much appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week.